shared the Nobel Prize for revealing the structure of DNA and wrote about the discovery in The Double Helix. Now he has a new book about basically getting along in life. It is Avoid Boring People, Lessons from a Life in Science. And James Watson is here. Welcome. Very pleased to be so here. So this is great. This has really got a double meaning here. And people who look at the book very carefully can see something that says other people. But basically you're saying avoid, avoid boring other people, but avoid, avoid, being, avoid people who are boring as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think you and I have reached a stage in life where uh, meeting boring people isn't our problem. <laughs> it's, it's the other one. But, Occasionally, but you know. But when you're young, yeah. you know, you're in search of glamour or whatever it is. You you want to leave a person being better than before you met a person. So that's sort yeah, of. You know, it's funny about this because you describe, you say this is kind of an object lesson for people, and not not necessarily just scientists, although that's your your specialty, but. I mean, people might be surprised at some of the things you feel like, you know, don't be the smartest person in the class, don't, don't necessarily shine, don't be the one. Why? Well, uh, I think you've got to spend some time learning yourself. And uh, Crick, Francis Crick and I would have never found the double helix if there hadn't been a, a better chemist having a desk in the same room with the two of us. We didn't know any chemistry. Yeah. So... You were a birder. I love that. He's a birder turned scientist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I wanted to be a naturalist. Yeah. And suddenly I faced, you know, without any real background in chemistry, uh, seeing that I wanted to solve a chemical puzzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew I had to know physics and math, but Crick knew that. So that yeah. took that pressure off me. And you so, weren't intimidated by the fact that you didn't necessarily have the highest IQ for people who you were no, competing because, with? No, uh, because... My teachers supported me, and you know I could always speak up in class, maybe faster than someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, IQ matters some, but a lot of other things matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the passion you feel for a subject, you know, mm -hmm. lets you really focus on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think unless you really don't do anything, unless you're doing something important. Mm -hmm. You know, you say things like. Um when you're going to do your thesis, pick someone who's younger than you are, even though you're pretty young usually when no, you're doing no, no, thesis, no, to, I, to be your advisor. I, no, I meant pick a young thesis advisor, you know, yeah. a younger member of the department. Yeah, He's older than you, older, but maybe uh, they're, they're likely doing something new. Yeah. They've been hired <laughs> because yeah. they brought something new to the department. And so if you want to get into a new field, generally work for someone young. Mm -hmm. So I worked for, I was 20 when I started my thesis work, and uh, uh, I worked for someone who was 35 before mm -hmm. he'd had a child, and he you know, had a lot of time to think about me, whereas if you work for someone who's chairman of the department and, uh, you know, consulting with companies, uh, they're going to be away a lot, and uh, uh, I've... I so benefited by mm. having people take an interest in mm. me. I think, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, there were only three of us in the room. Mm. And uh, all three of us ended up with the Nobel Prize on seven <laughs> occasions. Pretty impressive. <laughs> so, you know, the secret to my success is uh, certainly mm. good nurture. So I'm not one, <laughs> you know, oh. I think DNA is more important than many people think. But mm. on the other hand, my success came from nurture. Mm. One of the things I love in here, I know you're an avid tennis player, but you advise people not to take up golf. Why is that? Consumes all the day. <laughs> but I always and, say, and it's a other, rude sport. And the <laughs> other thing is you're, you have to be with probably three boring men. <laughs> For a long time, whereas <laughs> you never talk to your opponents on the That's tennis true. court. Mm -hmm. It's very different. It's not a social game. Mm -hmm. Doubles is, but I like to play to, uh, mm -hmm. just singles. <laughs> what did you discover about yourself when you you actually had your own DNA laid out and analyzed? Was there some, well, I is didn't there anything? discover anything because we haven't looked at enough people. And uh, what they told me would have frightened me if I were 20. Mm. You know, I had five potential cancer-causing genes. But I've reached 80, so maybe I have some protective genes. So 
uh, was from my experience, if I were a young person, I wouldn't be sequenced and told what was my fate. And the one thing that would matter to me, uh, whether I'm predisposed to, uh, genetically predisposed to Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. I didn't want to know. So well, see, now that's, how do you feel about the whole debate over that, over how much should be known, how much, I mean, if it's available through science, should we not well, all early on, uh, someone have probably the should to have it? told me whether I was tolerant to lactose. <laughs> you know, yeah. whether I could Are you milk. lactose intolerant? I think I am. Oh. And, you know, for I know my whole that. childhood, I thought milk was good for you. Yeah. So I persisted in drinking milk in my yeah. 20s. You know, well, that's if someone had told right me that, you know, I would have, uh, yeah. you know, gone on to pure coffee or more <laughs> orange juice. Or bourbon, maybe. <laughs> yes. But, so I think you should only be told things which can enhance your life. I, I sort of would give anyone bad news. You wouldn't give anybody bad news? No, unless there was a corrective. Unless you know, the only corrective for knowing you're to get Alzheimer's is, uh, you know, to spend all your money right away. Mm. <laughs> it, this book is, is very optimistic. I mean, some of it is humorous, obviously, but it's, it, there's, a, there's a little bit of a shine on it. I mean, you, don't, you, you really believe, in some respects, that anybody can make it in a field, essentially, if they have a passion for it. Oh, well, you have to have a certain... Uh, uh, well, I don't think you'd probably have a passion for it if you didn't have a lot of dopamine <laughs> constantly <laughs> coming out. So I think that's a requirement. Is you, you, you almost have to walk fast. You want to move through life. You're impatient. If you're not impatient, someone's going to get there before. And uh, Are you, you intolerant? No, I don't think I am. There's well, a difference. Huh? It's hard to say. Someone accused me of not wanting to, you know, discriminate. I, that I said, uh, you know... Uh, I didn't want to be with fat people. It, all it meant was <laughs> that I, I, they can't walk as fast as I do. So, oh, you know, uh, so, but on the other hand, I can say I did hire two uh, abnormally fat people. So I've never discriminated against someone uh, and they can do a job. But I think you're just trying to say you want to hire people. We all discriminate. Yeah, it's whether we unfairly discriminate. You discriminate because you've got the wrong name or the wrong skin color. Whereas uh, you, you want to no, know enough about the person. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't want someone who looks evil. <laughs> because <laughs> people who look evil are more likely to be evil than people who look good. You know, so I think you have a lot of wisdom, and a lot of wisdom in the book. So that's, the book is really the it wisdom is, from fun. old age. And, well, uh, you're still pretty young. All right. Avoid boring people and being boring. James Watson, thanks thank so much. You. All right, and that is it for Greater Boston. Tomorrow night, Jared Bowen goes center stage with the musical Wicked, and Boston Globe Pulitzer Prize winner Charlie Savage with his new book. That and more tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Good night.